Okay, all right, we have another Wall of Sound interview for you and with me is the wonderful Nikki Brimman of Blood Command. She's just moved across the world to Norway for good and we'll miss her so much here in Australia, but she gets to kick ass in a very cool death pop Norwegian band. Nikki, how is Europe liking your stage antics? Yeah, uh, um, thank you for having me and they are loving it. I've had such amazing feedback so far from all of our live shows that we've done. Um, it was a pretty wild ride to join a band that I'd never met and then mm. do a tour with them supporting um, Norwegian band Kval Attack. And, you know, like our first ever show as like with Blood Command's current lineup was a sold out show in Gothenburg. Oh. And it was just amazing. Like people just said that I was the right fit and that, you know, Blood Command finally have a front person, not just a singer. So it was really to know that they enjoyed it and it felt really good for me as well to know that I was still able to perform after years of not being on stage it just felt right again oh that's so good do you notice a big difference between like uh, Australian crowds and European crowds yeah not really I think like Melbourne crowds can be a little bit hard sometimes to warm up but I think that's a good thing because then it's made me be okay if the crowd are harder to get into it mm. um it's kind of made it yeah better for me as a performer to be able to be just like not care as much but also know tricks to get people into it but yeah all in all i don't really notice a huge difference if people like your music they like your music and they'll get into it and yeah. if it's a good show they'll get into it as well yeah so true i feel like and like in all seriousness how you join Blood Command and like them contacting you through Facebook. You're like, yeah, cool. It's like a huge, and the move is a huge life achievement that people would just dream about. Like, was this the end goal when you joined the band to move there? Yeah, it was. Like initially when I was asked to join the band, I thought one day I'll have to move over there. But you know, it wasn't like an immediate thought because I had a life in Melbourne. And then um, obviously now that it's become a reality, it's pretty surreal it's very overwhelming like to you know move overseas start a new life give up everything in Melbourne and then you know join a band and like jump right into touring and then our album's coming out super soon but it's you know it is a it was a dream of mine and I feel very lucky and very proud of myself that I've been able to achieve it because like you said like not many people would and, um, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, have I done the right thing? Like, it's a pretty big deal. Like, you know, saying goodbye to like all my family and friends in Melbourne. But then I would always regret not doing it. Yeah. You know, whereas if I give it a go and, you know, it's all working out. Like, I'm never, ever going to have regrets. And I'm really, yeah, proud of myself there for doing it because it's what I've always wanted to do. It's yeah, a dream come true. Literally. And I guess it's all coming to fruition now with your new album coming out on July 1st, Praise Armageddonism. It's a tongue twister. And it does kind of feel like, you know, the pressure's been building for a while. The singles have been amazing. And it's just going to explode on July 1st. Having played the songs live and like, obviously you had time to sit down with them and record them in the studio. Do you have like a personal favorite at the moment? Yeah, it's a good question. I, for me, it, it's the like the bookends for the ah. intro and the outro tracks. I think they're the perfect Blood Command songs, and they have a few little um, special parts in them that people won't expect. Particularly the outro track, I think it is like there's a sort of twist in the song that people won't expect, and I, I actually think that will probably be the the most favorite song on the album oh that's my gig yeah like yeah pretty amazing the first time I heard it I got like tears in my eyes and (laughs) I was like I can't believe the band want me to sing on this like this is amazing and yeah it's like yeah the intro and outros for me are definitely yeah my favorites oh I love that I have to say like Saturday City is an absolute bop I love that track like it just It sounds like you had so much fun, but I know that you were like in a studio alone without the band. Like, how did you get the vibe up to deliver that? Yeah, 
interesting as well that that's your favorite and it's like a it's cool because that song was actually released with Blood Command's previous singer. Really? And yeah, it's on Spotify. Oh, I didn't know. So um, that's an interesting one because people will, if they, not that I do this, not that I give a damn about anybody else, but if they want to compare the two vocalists, people can actually do that because that song has been released. And so that song was quite daunting for me because I was like, if, you know, my version turns out weaker than the, the single that's out, that they've already released, you know, it'll be really obvious because the song is out there in the world. But then I thought, you know, I'm not one to compare myself to other musicians. I'm happy for other people and their successes and their choices in what they want to do with their lives. So I've never compared myself to the previous vocalist. And I think that really shows in Saturday City because my version is a lot more Nikki, it's you know got yeah. a lot more punk to it, whereas the previous version was a little bit more poppy, and the vocals were pulled back further in the mix. My vocals really loud, in your face. And, <laughs> and your face, exactly. And yeah, it was a really fun one for me to record because I wanted to put my spin on it. And Ingvar, who is what commands our primary songwriter, and he produces all the records. He when we were when he was producing it. He really wanted me to put that punk thing into it too. And I think it works so well. Um, it was really difficult initially, the thought of recording on opposite sides of the globe, but you know, the band had already recorded all of the music. The album had been mastered with the previous vocalists' uh, vocals on it. And so going into the studio, I was able to prepare a lot because I was able to listen to the versions with the vocals on them already. And so with Saturday City, I went to a vocal coach because at the start I was really scared. I wasn't going to be able to sing that high. That's one of the highest songs. Oh, you nailed it. And yeah, I was really proud of myself because I put in the hard work. So going into the studio, I had nothing to fear and nothing to be nervous about because I'd put in the back work. And I think if you do that, there's no need to be nervous. Yeah. Um, and working with Ingo was great. It was, you know, I had my headphones, Talon Orr, who was the engineer, was in the next room. And then Ingo was, it was like he was in the next room too, because I was in the vocal booth and I couldn't see Callan, who was in the next room, let alone Ingo, who was on the other side of the world. So it was actually a pretty, pretty cool experience and it worked very well. Yeah. It's also interesting that I guess everything was done and you sort of came in on top and just track the vocals and everything do you wish you sort of had more input into maybe other aspects or you're kind of happy to like slot in here for now and then going on further it'll be a bit more collaborative very good question i definitely didn't and wouldn't do it again with somebody writing the lyrics for me yeah it's definitely not who i am as an artist but under the circumstances of course i was happy to do it this way um but we've since recorded and written a lot of new material and all of it is written by both Ingvar and myself and that's how it will be for everything going forward. Um, I think it was, yeah, it was cool for me as an artist though to get given songs and learn to sing <laughs> them and not have to go to, through the hours and hours and hours and hours of songwriting. But I have so much to say as an artist and I am a songwriter and it was hard for me to feel like those songs were mine because they were written by someone else and they've been recorded with the previous vocalist. So I had to like really use a lot of my tactics as a performer going into the studio to make them feel like they were my songs. And I think in the end they did kind of, but yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't in the future want songs written for me it's not who I am as a, an artist. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I remember you saying uh, when we spoke last year on the Educate Ebony podcast, episode six, guys, um, yeah. that you, <laughs> you, were, you were really trying to like expand your vocal style and you can obviously definitely hear and you just said you work with a vocal coach. Are you where you'd like to be now or you're still like, oh, I know there's more I can do or I want to experiment more? Yeah, I think everyone no matter who you are, can always learn more. So I always want to learn and grow. And 
I'm always open to feedback and constructive feedback. But in saying that, I also want to keep my hardcore roots and still be a punk vocalist. I don't ever want to be, you know, paramore vocalist or something <laughs> like that. Like, like no beef with what people like that do. They're amazing in their own right. But I still want to be Nikki, who's you know a punk rocker. I still want to have that edge to my vocals always. But yeah, I also want to work really hard to make the clean stuff sound really good and poppy when needed and the heavy stuff to sound really heavy but I still want to have an edge to it yeah but I always feel like there's always something to learn no matter how good you are and um, yeah I always have that mentality no matter what I do yeah 100% and I read that Blood Command's like music thematically draws on is it the Heaven's Gate movement I oh, what yeah, is this? They, oh my gosh. They were, they were a religious movement um, who believed that there was going to be like a spacecraft that would take them away to this planet. And they were all very intelligent people who were a part of the movement. A lot of people refer to Heaven's Gate as a cult, but they didn't. And they were all really intelligent people who, you know, were very mentally well from what the research I've done. Perhaps the leaders of the movement may have had a few of their own issues. Um, and very sadly, the group of people all committed suicide in bunk beds. And they were all wearing like Nike decade shoes. It's what? like super creepy. And a really interesting fact about it is that in Pagan, I used to write a lot about cults. And I like invented an imaginary cult for one of our records. I used a lot of metaphor. And then when I came to Blood Command, Ingvar had this, a really similar songwriting style where he would write a lot about the same stuff thematically, which I thought was really weird. And also why now he and I write so well together because we, we had the same songwriting style. And I distinctly remember I went to the, I forgot the name of the, oh, the Museum of Death in Hollywood many years ago. and. One thing, because I'm very fascinated by true crime, yeah. <laughs> you know, common for a woman in her 30s to be into true crime. So I, I've, I've always been fascinated by true crime. So I went to the Museum of Death, which is like a true crime museum. They've got like all your Charles Manson stuff and your John Wayne Gacy stuff. But one thing, like the main thing I remember from there was they actually have one of the bunk beds from the Heaven's Gate death. Oh. And I just... I was so spooked by it and I just remember like it just stuck with me like the image of the bunk beds and then you know like now I'm in this band where they <laughs> use the gate themes throughout um, a lot of their songs like in the intro of Praise Armageddonism the, the passage while it's a you know recorded by somebody that we hired and it's taken from the Old Testament from the Bible it um, is supposed to uh, sort of emulate Marshall Applewhite, who was the leader of Heaven's Gate, his um, speeches he used to do. Oh. And we want to we also draw on, like, us against the rest of the world, sort of as Heaven's Gate did, like, with Blood Command's mentality. It's, you know, it's us. It's us against them, and those themes are drawn on as well. What a backstory! Yeah. I like that. <laughs> in a very quick sum up yeah yeah no that's super cool though and I guess with release coming up so soon it's going to be exciting are you guys doing anything to celebrate we're actually playing a festival somewhere in Norway on the day that the album comes out that was just perfect Um, I'm sure there'll be lots of celebrations had we've got a lot of shows coming up a lot of festivals 2000 Trees in Cheltenham in the UK is on the 9th of July. But yeah, for the album, I'm just so excited. Be so relieved to finally have it out to the world because it's been a long time coming. Yes. Especially the boys in the band who started writing the record in like 2018. So and they'd be more than ready for it to be released. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so excited for it. I think everyone else is too. So we wish you the best of luck with the release day and the album. And it's been lovely chatting with you. Too nice to see you again.